Buongiorno, mon amigos. And for those of you that don't speak French, welcome back to Nervous Reviews, where we are going to review every single book known to man and rank them. Coming soon. It's once again your favorite host, Nervith. And once again, your favorite series of all time, Rhythm of War, Stormlight Archive. Now, I know this is very, very long awaited, but um, I didn't want to do this badly. And, you know, it's taking me a long time because I'll spoil it right up front. I think this is one of the worst books, maybe a little bit better than uh, Oathbringer, but it's definitely third out of the four. This is by far one of the weaker books in the Stormlight Archive, and I'm going to go ahead and explain why. Thank you to all the positive reception on my last video. Thank you to YouTube for ruining the dislike so that it became positive. If you look at that video, you'll see that I engage a lot with the comments. I'm very, very happy to talk about all of the stuff that I talk about in this review in the comments. And if you check that comment section, you'll see that you know, I, I replied to basically all the comments. So if you do have any problem with my review, I'd love to hear it in the comments and I would love to discuss it. Uh, the one caveat is that if I read your comment and it seems like you didn't watch the video, I'm just not going to reply to your comment because at some level I need to you know, understand the fact that I need to talk to like a rational human being. So do please keep it logical so that we can all talk about this. I changed a lot of minds in the last comment section and a lot of people changed my minds. So overall, I do hope it's the same experience and uh, let's get right into it. Now let's just get this cleared off right off the bat. I'm gonna rate it at three stars, right? And that means for me, it is a solid, probably even great book. On that level, it is a one of the more common, but you know, it, it's the upper tier of books that I review. Um, most books I put down in the one and two star, Stormlight is definitely in the upper echelon, but I'm going to be talking about almost exclusively the negative parts of this book within this review because I think that all the good parts are talking about to death. The Sanderson normal stuff, the ending was fantastic. The characters were just amazing. The character arcs were just great. The lore and the way that the plot developed over time was fantastic. This is all common knowledge, so I'm going to skip ahead to the parts that I think that aren't as good because I, that's a more interesting discussion in my opinion. Very few people have a negative opinion of Sanderson's book and I'm one of the people who rated it very lowly. So I think that I'm one of the few people who's actually able to come up with a distinct opinion about this that is somewhat negative and so that's what I want to focus on. Now the distinct difference between the first three books and this and you know let me, let me discount the third book actually because I think that that was a slightly probably slightly worse than this book. So let's say between the first two books and this fourth one is that it feels like he's running out of really interesting plot narratives. A very significant part of this book's plot ends up being extremely boring. There are very distinct parts of this where I just felt like I didn't want to read. Most people didn't seem to want to read them. They were just not as interesting as the other bits. It felt like all of the interesting plots were sidestepped so that we could make some plot progression so that we could get to what Sanderson wanted to be the ending without actually making those plot points interesting. Frankly speaking, Navani's plot and Raboniel's plot were just absolutely boring and not only that yasna's flat was just awful and you know when i say awful i mean in terms of sanderson's scope they're fine but we know sanderson he can do way better than this the uh, adolan plot was fantastic the kaladin plot at for a majority of the story was just awful as well the dalinar plot was very solid you have these interesting stories going on and they're so often sidestepped almost completely at one point for like you know 500 pages for like half the book just in order to explore these more boring plots of which I have very little interest in. Now Sanderson is the one author who I can actually say most people who read this maybe thought that that was interesting. Maybe most people thought that was interesting in terms of general storytelling skills. The plot was extremely boring. I, I think that compared to so many other books that are out there, this is just a boring plot. So much stuff that happened with Navani felt like it was going nowhere. It felt like there was very little progression. It was so slow. And I understand that it, it was needed to set up so much other stuff that ended up being fantastic. But on some level, you need to understand that the setup is just as important as the conclusion. The setup is just as important as the entire conflict. And if you're making the setup this boring and the conclusion that great, you need to take a look in the mirror and understand why am I making the setup so bad in the first place? Sanderson's amazing at making setups really, really endearing and interesting. We can see this with Kaladin. In so many other situations, we felt like Kaladin was moving forward. We felt like Kaladin was doing stuff. We weren't there sitting, thinking, oh, how is this story going to end? We could enjoy the plot for what it was worth. And this was one of the weakest plots in the entirety of Stormlight. The whole relationship going on with Namani, there was a lot of lore going on and the lore part was interesting. But other than the lore, it felt like everything else was boring. It was as if the lore was itself carrying the entirety of that plot. And because this plot was the majority of the story, that might be a problem. If your majority of part of the story is just carried by what people can search up on the wiki, I don't know if that's such a good story. And this is all going on while we know for a fact Adolin is doing an awesome plot. It's fantastic, it's interesting, it's exciting, there's so much lore going on. It's so suspenseful. And it's as if every time something cool happens, like Adolin, we cut away to this comparatively annoying plot. This is very similar to what I felt like in book one, when we kept cutting away to Shallan, who seemed to have absolutely no significance to the main story. Now, it ended up being worth it. Of course it was worth it. Sanderson wrote it. Sanderson very rarely writes a bad ending. But was the build-up actually good on its own? And 
that's one of the very few things that many people say is wrong about the first book. Shallan's just super annoying. Shallan just keeps popping up and is comparatively boring. That's how I feel about the entire Navani colon sub, not even sub, it's like the entire plot of the first book. That it just felt like such a, such a step away from everything interesting that was happening. Honestly, that's really confusing to me because it should have been a very interesting plot. It was a very interesting idea. It was just executed so oddly. I'm not sure why Sanderson chose to go with someone who technically was the most important, but really wasn't doing that much on the ground uh, to, to carry the entire plot. Kaladin was exciting and he was doing some stuff on the ground, but it felt like he was making no progress. We kept coming back to Kaladin day after day, and it was just the same thing. It was the same thing over and over again. Oh, feel bad for Kaladin. Oh, oh, he went through this tough thing. Oh, he had to do this fight. At this point, I think we get it. We've moved past that. We need more than that. And it got to the point where I, I, I find it hard to encapsulated into anything else uh, other than felt like he was intentionally padding the story. It, it happens once in a while, Sanderson might have just been padding the story, trying to make it longer than Oathbringer. And for some reason he did that and there's no way, there's no way this needs to be longer than Oathbringer. The amount of stuff that went on in this book, not a chance. Like there were so many chapters where we just cut away uh, to someone else who wasn't experiencing the main plot and they looked at the main plot and they were like, wow, that's crazy. That's great. That's crazy. It was so odd to see that over and over and over again. It, it drives me crazy that this book is so, as long as it is. Why did this need to be the longest Stormlight Archive book? I don't know. Now to add on to this point that things felt like they weren't really progressing, that they were relatively boring. But I think the people who read this book can understand what I mean when I say it felt like at the beginning of the book versus the end of the book. I mean, there were some things that were going on, but a lot of the stuff that happened was just undone. It had ramifications but ramifications worth 450,000 words? Not a chance. And this is something that's usually Sanderson's strong suit. He's usually very good at saying, this is the beginning, this is the end. They're gonna change a bunch during that, it's gonna be distinctly different. And that's the one thing I can always count on him to do. The ending will always have a significantly different world than the beginning. Rhythm of War is the only one that actually breaks that mold. I think I've talked about Navani long enough, but Kaladin is, is a different animal because he's almost essentially the mascot of the Stormlight Archive. And so it's very interesting to see that while Sanderson very often evolves characters, Kaladin is not really evolving as much as you would expect. Now surface level there's a lot of stuff that's going on that says, okay, if you wrote this down in a wiki, if you wrote this plot point by plot point, yes, Kaladin technically evolved. Technically his story is changing. But what we're seeing is that even though everything's changing, he stays the same. And that might be an intentional plot point, but what it makes for is a repetitive story where Kaladin is just always sad. And I've talked about this in my previous reviews, and I, I'm not a very big fan of uh, Kaladin, th this whole Kaladin thing. I think it's overplayed, I think it's overdramatic. I feel like it's undeserved. I've gotten to a point where I feel like he's just doing it to milk the readers. On the flip side of that, let's step back and say that the ending of Kaladin's story was once again amazing. For some reason, we just like resolved a plot point that was way, way in the past that I forgot that we were even dealing with. And it just, it was great. It was um, amazing. I don't even need to say it. Kaladin's plot line had an amazing ending. And while Kaladin's ending was great, it felt like Navani's conclusion to the story, hers was okay. But then there's a certain major uh, new character that enters the scene alongside Namani has to have an extremely coincidental and easy way out of the plot. Uh, the whole conclusion with Navani felt like there's certain parts of this that Navani earned, but there was a big central part of it that this other character and Navani shared that didn't feel earned. It felt very coincidental. It felt very easy. It felt like the entirety of the story was adding up to one interesting thing. And it just so happened that this interesting thing also resolved this plot. And that coincidence makes it feel like it was an extremely easy plot to fix. We didn't see her working towards this thing in particular in any meaningful way. While we saw her do this, do that, none of it was effective. And to go from that to, oh, we just solved the whole thing, it just feels very jarring to me. And I think that more or less encapsulates the general feelings that I have towards this book. I've gone into a couple specifics, but you know, there's, there's tons of other stuff I could be talking about. The point of view that Shalon has within the story felt very lazy. It felt like Mraze's part in this plot was a bit boring and you know, the ending was a little bit surprising, but other than that, meh. And since I know a lot of people that are watching this video have already made up their mind that I hate the story and I hate everything about it, let me just reiterate. Let me just reiterate, Kaladin's arc is fantastic. The entire arc with the Dolan is just awesome. I, I very, very much enjoyed it. The twists with the Spren is fantastic. And the one with Seth is also fantastic. So we have a lot of great characters and a lot of great players, but it feels like everything that Sanderson's intentionally trying to pull up doesn't do as well. The first three books, 
at least in some level, make me feel like the story is moving forward. It felt like on the fourth one, it's halted. It, the entire development of the story has just been arrested. And this is to be expected. It's a penultimate book in the first five books within the series, which is supposed to be its own conclusion. So I would expect something like this to happen, but I didn't expect it to be so dramatic. So that's all I have to complain about. And God, was this an unbelievably lethargic read. I thought Oathbringer was slow. This is unbelievable. There's a reason this review took me so long. I've been reading it since it came out, since November. Last November, I planned, well, okay, I'm just going to read it in two weeks, force myself to read it, get it out, have it done with. It was just tearing at my soul every time I sat down to read it, knowing that there was a thousand, eight hundred, six hundred more pages of this slow, dragging on plotline. And so there were times where I could just sit down and I would enjoy, you know, over the course of a couple of days, a hundred pages, two hundred pages, three hundred pages of just fun, exciting stuff that felt like it was moving the plot forward. But so often, it just didn't feel that way and it just made for such a lethargic read. So I hope that you guys understood my point of view within the story, that you can see what I see and understand, yeah, there are faults in this story and there are significant faults in the story. And it could have made someone like me not really enjoy it that much. So I just hope that people can understand this and you know, it's not as black and white as you're insulting Sanderson, you're insulting Stormlight, you're insulting the rhythm of war. Because I'm not, it, it's a lot more complicated than that. And for my final rating, I'm gonna give it, you know what, three stars. Um, it is what it is and like or dislike whatever you say but if you dislike i hope that you at least leave a comment so that we can discuss and if you agree god please let me know if you agree man we're gonna be like the only two on this entire planet i appreciate you i got a couple comments like that and it made my day to just feel like i wasn't the only person thinking this so thanks so much thank you all so much for watching thank you all for bearing with me all these months um i hope that you guys have a great uh, new year i hope you guys are doing great uh, i will be continuing to post videos I'm, I'm planning on reading a lot more game of thrones in the future and uh, a couple of jim butcher books those are my main priority and I'm, I'm hoping to pick up outlander sometime in the near future uh so if you're looking forward to that uh subscribe otherwise i hope you found this 20 minutes uh educational interesting or somewhat entertaining thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you in the next video goodbye